Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another CAT seminar uh, in our seminar series here. Uh, today, uh, I would like to, uh, my name is Errol Tutumler, most of you know me, but I would like to uh, introduce actually one of my students related to our research project uh, findings that he will present. Uh, actually, uh, today's presenter is uh, Mr. Jai Lo. Uh, Jai is one of my students, again, PhD students, but Jai came and joined us back in 2016 as a uh, three plus two student first from Tsinghua University. It's one of the top universities in China. And then uh, he got his master's in 2018. And since then, he's been in the program uh, in his doing his PhD, working on different imaging projects actually in the group. And uh, today uh, in his talk, you will get to hear computer vision actually nicely. Uh, following up from last week's seminar, the same topic of computer vision, but now applied to uh, rocks or aggregates, our building blocks of payment materials, right? The idea of how we can use computer vision now in identifying aggregate particle shape uh, and sizes, but more so in the recent uh, years, uh, we focused on how we can use that technology uh, to, in the field now, identify basically aggregate stockpiles or, or constructed aggregate test sections or test uh, or, or piles that are delivered to a job site, for example, analyzing those using computer vision instead of, um, again, running a, a lab type, a, uh, type of a manual sieve analysis test. So how we actually are going to be using this technology, not only in payment engineering, but also railroad engineering and ballast all of the aggregate assemblies that Jay will talk about. And uh, one thing that I would like to mention to you before I uh, let Jay start the seminar presentation is that think about what futuristic uh, applications and eventually what benefits we can, we can take actually uh, out of this uh, technology and application of the road construction and uh, the inspection of aggregate uh, shape and properties out in the field or, or actually you'll, even in specifications in the future, right? That's kind of where we're going and uh, hope you enjoy the presentation. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Professor, to introduce me. Uh, again, my name is Jerry Law and it's my great honor to stand here to give this talk. And thank you guys uh, to join this talk uh, also like in person or like online. So probably I can get start. So. Oh, so uh, for today's talk, I, I will break it into four sections. The first will be the background and introduction, where I will briefly introduce the aggregate materials and some background like knowledge about computer vision. And the second section will be the pro proposed methodology, where I, I will briefly introduce like the proposed pipeline that we use to, anal uh, to analyze the aggregate assembly. The third section will be the case studies where I will introduce two previous accomplished projects in our group. And for the ongoing efforts, I will introduce two ongoing uh, projects that, that we are currently working on uh, for the uh, imaging projects. Okay, uh, let me go into the first section. So for aggregate materials, they are widely used in the construction of transportation infrastructures. And they play an essential role in the overall performance of various transportation applications. As you guys can see, uh, the aggregate materials can be used in asphalt concrete, uh, portnet concrete, and also they can form the substructure for the railroad. Uh, and they can use in some hydraulic applications like the stream back reference. So um, uh, with that, we need to uh, properly like evaluate the uh, quality of the aggregate materials, right? So there are like several uh, current approaches. The first is the manual measurement and visual inspection. Uh, as you guys can see on the right hand side, there is like uh, an ideal view, like man manager who is like uh, measuring the size of the large size riprap uh, particle in the field. And the second approach will be the uh, sieve analysis, which is pretty common in our daily lab life, right? I hope everyone uh, here probably has done some sieve analysis uh, in the past. So that is basically we get the size distribution of uh, aggregate mixture. And with that distribution, we further investigate the property of that mixture. Yeah. 
and also the ground penetrating radar device, which is a really high tech one, uh, which is also called GPR, is another common non destructive approach that we can use to evaluate the uh, the uh, aggregate. I will get assembly. So basically, we have several antennas attached uh, at the end of a truck or some like uh, moving cars, and the antenna will emit some like EM waves towards the ground or towards or towards the surface of the railroads. And the EM waves will like reflect back if it meets several like abnormal stuff underneath the surface. So we have the uh, the wave shape and also the uh, the depths of the abnormal stuff so that we can understand like what's going on underneath and we can further investigate like the property of the pavements or the railroad. So but in our in this like presentation I will introduce more about the computer vision applications. Uh, so if you guys are really interested in this, I think Professor Spencer gives a really uh, comprehensive uh, review about computer vision so you guys can Go back and check that out. I think that video is available on YouTube. So yeah. So just a quick introduction to computer vision. So what the goal of computer vision is to extract the meaningful information from pixels. So on the left hand side is actually what our human can see from an image. It's just like an image because we are trained since we are born. But what actual computer says is just like a matrix of different like numbers. So what we need to do in the computer vision is to extract the useful and meaningful information from this like big matrix. So vision is easy for us because we are born and we are trained since then. So we understand what's going on uh, if we see like something, but it's remarkably hard for computers because images are ambiguous. Uh, as you guys can see here, what's the object in the middle? It's 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 probably like a Coke photo, but without other additional information, we cannot make sure that it is a real one. So, and also uh, there are like many images with blended objects, like this balanced images. We have like some like uh, particles underneath the top ones, which is occluded by the upper particles. So we can see only a small portion of it. So it will make the analysis uh, much tougher. And also there will be some like intro class variation for the same object, like the car, the, the, uh, the man, like if we see the object from a different viewpoint, or we see it at different illumination levels, the result will be really different. And also for the same class, like, uh, like the third image here, we have a kid and a really big guy, like the Yao, a famous Chinese basketball player here. They are, they are like of this different scales. And also back to our application, like the aggregate materials, we have very small ones, but also we have very like large ones, like this size. So uh, with all those different features, which make computer vision kind of a hard task. Uh, so here I will introduce four typical like uh, tasks in computer vision fields. The first one is called the classification. So for this task, what we will need to do is that giving an input image, we need to tell uh, like what is the class, like what kind of object is in this image. Like for, for, for this one, we should tell that there is a balloon located in this image. So the second part is the semantic segmentation, where we need to extract all the pixels belong to different objects. Like for, for this one, we should extract all the blue pixels and say that those pixels belong to the balloon class. And the third one is the object detection. We need to create several bounding boxes, each contain the detected objects. And also we need to localize those bounding boxes at the precise location in that image. So this is called the object detection. And the last one is the instance segmentation, which is kind of like the combination of the semantic segmentation and the object de detection. So for this task, we need to create a bounding box, do the semantic, a segmentation for each object. Also, we need to identify like each individual instances for each class. So, uh, so for our application, we mainly focus on the last instance segmentation task. Okay, so now 
go back to the history of computer vision. So computer vision is actually like uh, has like a long history, uh, but uh, back in 2000, it's more like uh, the majority techniques in computer vision is just some like tra tra traditional ideas, like use some like age detection, feature extraction, something like that. Uh, but uh, those cannot give us a really good like uh, results and protectancy. On this chart, we have the the two like green bars are related to the traditional computer vision techniques. We can say the error is about uh, twenty three percent for the image net. Uh, so uh, by the way, image net is one of the famous benchmark for the uh, classification task. So starting from the two thousand and twelve, uh, by applying the deep learning frameworks, we can see like the error drops down dramatically, and recently it it even drop, drops lower than the than us, like than the human like green bar. So, so which shows that we can benefit a lot if we apply the deep learning like techniques uh, into our computer vision application. Okay, so let me go into the proposed methodology for this kind of pipeline thing. So, uh, let, let me restate our problem. So, uh, so here, given this hot mixture as from cut section view, what we really need to extract from this image, right, is the gradation information, like whether it's open graded, it's dense graded, it's gap graded, or it's uniform graded. We need to extract this information, right? And given this rip wrap stockpile image, what we need to get, we need to get the size and shape information. Also, we want to predict the R category of this rip wrap stockpile. Next, given this aggregate subgrades PCR plus uh, uh, query by product mixture, we need to get the uh, mixed computation grade, uh, gradation as segregation information from it. So this image is uh, gets from the ICTR 27 SP43 project. Yeah. And last for the balance change section, what we need to get is also the gradation, but Ideally, we still want to get the falling condition estimation so that we can understand like uh, the quality of this balance section. Okay. Mm, so here is our proposed methodology here. Basically, it has three steps. The first is the data set, uh, is data collection and data set preparation. So during this step, we will uh, clearly uh, state like what are our like tasks and what will like our image data set be like, and we will go to the field or we will go to the app to collect like uh, enough images to create a rich data set to be prepared for the future uh, training phase. And then we will find a proper model to do the uh, segmentation tasks. And then we will train the model with uh, established data set in the first step. With the trained uh, model, we will do the image segmentation task and then with the segmented images, we can do further analysis to compute uh, task specific like indices as the final deliverables. Yeah, that's the proposed methodology here. So I, I will go into one by one. So for the data preparation part, uh, as we all know, deep learning model is inherent data driven, which means that it really requires task specific and high quality images to provide like sufficient guidance to the model to work under like different conditions. So which means that if we cannot find a good data set, we cannot establish a good quality data set, the model cannot do the task really uh, like well. So for example, this shows like the fair images that we collected in our balance application. So we can think those images have like different balance colors, different falling conditions, different aggregate types, etc. So we need to make sure that our data set is diverse enough and has good coverage so that it can cover almost all the like potential conditions that our model might meet in the future in the actual application. So next is the model selection. So for the instance segmentation task, we select the mask as in, so which is like a kind of uh, state of art. Yeah, it's kind of like a standardized uh, framework that is widely being used in different uh, applications, like in transportation, in, autom in autonomous 
training field, also in some medical like uh, applications as well. And so this algorithm is first proposed by the uh, Facebook AI research group there, and it is the best awarded paper in ICC with 2017. And those results are, are some like uh, visualization results from their original pu publication. And so next is so next it's about like the result analysis step. So what are the real results? So after the segmentation step, what we get are just only several like segmented units. Although those results can be different. Like for the refrain application, probably all we have like are the segmented like uh, large particle masks. But for our balanced application, probably we have some like additional information. Like because the condition is kind of more complex, we have biomaterials, we have aggregates, we have like other noise, etc. But uh, in general, we only get segmented images as our intermediate results. So during the results analysis step, we, we need to understand what we need for this specific uh, task. Like for the balance, we need to come up with the falling condition estimation. So the reprep, we somehow need to predict the, uh, our category for the asphalt. We need to get like uh, to identify whether it's square graded, uh, open graded, etc. So we need to understand what we need, and we can design like a task specific post processing module to do the result analysis step. That's our idea here. So, yeah. So yeah, I will go into two case studies. So the first one, the reprep uh, analysis, is one of the ICT project we have done yeah, uh, previously, led by Hao Hao, another PhD student in our group. Mm, so yeah, at the beginning, I just want to introduce some like image related projects in our group. So at the beginning of the 2000s, we have the EUIA uh, machine that constructed, which is actually located next door in the soil lab. So the target of this machine is individual particles and it uses some traditional computation techniques. So the second one is the TRB idea project, uh, which uh, where we uh, we focus on the balance section. So in this project, we propose like a uh, kind of a powerful tra traditional computation technique, which is named watershed. I will do a brief introduction about this in our in my later slide. Uh, the next will be the iReprep uh, software, which is uh, which is uh, 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 created in our ICT project. So the uh, during this project, we focus on the refresh stockpile, and this is the first project where we introduce the deep learning framework as the segmentation kernel, which actually brings the user independent feature to our overall process, which is really ideal. And the next one is we move our targets from the refresh stockpile to a more complex condition, the balance section, where we have fine materials filled in between all those gaps. So for this one, we also use the uh, deep learning kind of uh, framework inherent from the iRefrap uh, project. And for for the two current uh, projects, we have the 3D iRefrap, which we plan to move to increase one dimension. So we want to utilize uh, more like more in, uh, more rich features from the three dimensional space rather than 2D space. Uh, so this is uh, lead by how <laughs> And the, the last one, the FI automatic uh, balance scanning pro project is uh, the, the another ongoing project. In this project, we plan to build a hardware like a scanning, automated scanning platform where we can collect the field images from different real lines. And also we plan to improve the 2D segmentation algorithm by, uh, by modifying the architecture. And also we will enrich the data set by collecting more like field data from different like real lines. Uh, okay, so first is a, is a general introduction about the role of RIPRAP. So the RIPRAP also known as uh, Sean Rock, Rock Armor or Rubble is produced in chorus to armor, shore lines, stream beds, bridge, abutments, peonies, etc. against a uh, score as water ice erosion. So as you guys can see on the left, this is actually the production process when a quarry is producing uh, reprap materials. And on the right hand side is the stockpile, which is uh, separated by the size range. I mean, like the R5 is kind of like the medium size and R3 is a small size and R7 is really like a big size reprap. 
Mm. So here is our proposed uh, like uh, pipeline. So it's like almost the same, but for each step, we have uh, the task specific like requirements for each of the steps to ensure that it can successfully do the uh, size and ship property estimation for the large size script graph materials. So, so during the data set preparation step, uh, we, we should ensure that we have good quality stock per aggregate images declared, but with those raw images, we can do nothing during training process because the model cannot understand anything about a raw image. It's just some like metrics. So in order to train the model to provide enough information, we need to do the manual labeling to provide one truth to tell the model like where is each particle and what is the boundary of each of them. So that is uh, what we call the manual labeling step. And those labels will be treated as a front truth during the tra training and validation process. Yeah, and there are several cri criteria we set during the image recognition step to ensure the diversity and good coverage of the established data set. So first, uh, the data set should include aggregates from various geological origins and ag aggregate producers. Also, the data set should cover aggregates with different size, color, texture, and different viewing angles, all those different features we should include. As you guys can see, those are like of different colors, different viewing angles. Yeah. Mm, so for the labeling step, so uh, in short, we want to label as many particles as possible if the particle is uh, distinguishable by ourselves. And also for the boundary, we want to label it as precise as possible. We don't care like how many edges you have for the polygons. We just want to ensure the boundary is closely uh, like in, in circle the particle that we want to detect here. Yeah. That's the general idea for this uh, labeling step. So for the model, I will do a brief introduction. So for the mask RCM model, basically it has two branches. The first branch is the region-based RCM uh, CN network, which will do the uh, detection and localization for each particle. So as you can see, we have this input image and the, the model will generate a whole bunch of our uh, region of interest proposals. Like each of them will be a target a potential like uh, bounding box for one of the particles we see in that image. And then we, we, we will have a CLN feature extraction uh, like uh, layers to, do, to extract features from the input images. Also, it will shrink the size of the, the image and increase the uh, feature height. And then we will do the prediction of the class label. And also we will localize each of the bounding box and that is like the results for the first step. And for the second step is the fully convolutional neural network, where we will do pixel-wise segmentation. Like the, the input will be those like uh, bounding boxes for each individual uh, rock. And then we will do convolutional neural network and deconvolutional neural network, where we decrease the size at the beginning, increase the feature map, and then the computer will, or the model will know like, what are those like each features in the feature map and then it will uh, decrease the height and increase the size and the final output will be those segmented uh, each individual part particles as our output. Uh, so after the training, we will have a well-trained model to do the segmentation for this specific task. Uh, and uh, here is just like a general flow chart that we have for the training process. We have the input data set we will monitor the, uh, the training loss to ensure that we won't overtrain the model to have some like overfitting issue. And then we have the segmentation kernel train and we can input the image and output the seg uh, segmented ones. So to evaluate the performance of the model, we have uh, two metrics. The first is completeness. So this ratio actually describes the percentage of particle regions correctly detected uh, compared to the ground truth ones. Yeah, as you guys can see this uh, formula here. And this one actually measures the uh, performance of the object detection step, which is the first branch of the mask and network as I introduced. 
And the second one is the precision metrics. So this one is uh, when we use the intersection over union score, which is also called IOU score, uh, to calculate like the percent overlap between the segmented particle mask and the corresponding ground truth mask. So this step actually measures the uh, performance of the second step, which is a pixel-wise uh, segmentation branch I previously introduced. Yeah, those are the like several numbers we have here. We have about 80% uh, of the completeness and 87% of the precision, which is relatively good, which shows that our uh, trained model can do a good job during the segmentation phase. And with those segmented images for the riprap application, what we need, we need the size and shape uh, distribution and the, to, to predict the R category, right? So we have the some like example results analysis here. This is our input. This is the intermediate segmented results. And those are the final outputs for the size and shape information. Mm -hmm. So next I will go into the ballast uh, application that we have. So row of ballast, just a quick uh, background information. Ballast serves as an essential component in this uh, railroad substructure and it facilitates the drainage and provides structural support for the overall track system. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the ballast will progressively degrade by accumulating finer particles in the voids in between due to the primarily uh, uh, aspirated partial particle breakage and abrasion. Uh, so like as ballast is aging, the performance will deteriorate dramatically, which is not the thing that we want. So we want to accurately and uh, evaluate the quality of the ballast section in, in the field. That's why we bring like uh, this technique to the ballast application. So uh, one thing to mention here is that actually uh, the effort to evaluate the ballast section in our group uh, has like started back in 2015, where we also have some like traditional computer vision approach uh, established, which is called the watershed. So th this is a tra tra traditional technique to segment all the images. So uh, in our proposed approach, it, comp uh, it composes like three, three parts. The first is the uh, pre-processing parts, where we will have the input image. We will do some like uh, parameters tuning kind of thing to adjust, to do like a gamma precision or gamma correction, uh, natural filtering, something like that to ensure that the input image can do the watershed algorithm really good. And then with the watershed segmented uh, particles, we will do a convex hole, a convex hole analysis to classify which segmented uh, particles is actually a particle, which segmented mask is just like some falling area. And then we'll, we will ca calculate the PDS score, which is one of the uh, ballast falling indicator. I will introduce that in my data slide. So back to our comp computer vision application, we have this kind of uh, like similar like pipeline proposed here. Uh, but in each step, we have different requirements since this is a totally like different applications. So the ultimate goal is to estimate the balance falling conditions in the room. So during the preparation step, uh, we have like, uh, like the same requirements Like we want to have good quality uh, of uh, images and we will do the manual la la labeling to provide ground truth during the tra training step. But one thing to notice here is that instead of only have some like field images, we still want to have some uh, lab re-engineered images. Because uh, the main reason of this is that in the field, like for the balance se section, the condition is really complicated. We cannot say like uh, this image can provide enough guides for, like, for the size, enough guidance for the shape. We, we just want to have like the overall control for all the conditions. So we create several like lab, uh, lab stockpiles to provide those information. So here are just like the field uh, image collection results. We have uh, like those different like field images. We just want to ensure they have 
they are collected from different railroad lines and they have like different color size distributions for the conditions yeah and the other important features here and for the lab ones we actually have like uh, many different pairs uh, as you guys can see for the a pair a1 and a2 they are like different parts of arrangements for the b1 and b2 they are like different size distributions for the c1 c2 they have different colors for d1 d2 they have different uh lighting conditions and for e1 e2 they have different folding conditions so we explicitly uh ensure that the our established data set has all those information contained so that's our model can do a good job yeah and those are like the labeling procedure so for this one we somehow uh, improve our previous criteria by the second one as you guys can say the strict edges for the particles and the boundary so instead uh, using one single line segment we use uh, several of them i think this is one of the improvements we made after like uh, going into details of the uh, segmentation results we feel this can provide like a, a better estimation of the uh, the segmented images yeah. The, yeah this is the training process so here uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, not like the riprap application we train from scratch so for this one we uh, we adapt like the transfer learning concept here like for the riprap application the target is large size rocks but for our ballast uh, the target will be somehow different it has a uh, falling area but it also has some like small size rocks so uh, what transfer learning allows us to do is that we can utilize some knowledge that we already gained in the previous task and uh, by uh, by applying some additional data sets additional information we can Ex, uh, expect that the newer model can uh, can handle both previous project of uh, both previous tasks as and this like newer task as well. So this will reduce the requirements for the uh, for the uh, for the size of the data set. So that's the basic idea for the transfer learning concept here. Uh, and also like after training, we will have a mass classing model to do the segmentation. Uh, so here are some like, results here. And this is like the improvement we gain for after applying uh, like the model with some like neural balanced images. Uh, as you guys can see on the left hand side, it's just we directly apply this image with the I rip wrap segmentation kernel. As you guys can see, those are many particles that cannot be correctly identified and segmented. But on the right hand side, after uh, applying like uh, the enriched data set to the segmentation kind of we can see the segmentation results improved a lot we can take the much more uh, particles within these images uh, with different scales yeah. uh, here are some like example segmentation results we have here for fields and also for the lab but uh, i want to uh, emphasize here is that the goal of this project is always the field it's not the lab so the purpose to add the lab images is only to uh, to help train the model but it's not our goal yet so next with the segmented images we will do the following condition estimation so we, we will use this uh, percent degree segments concept here so it is defined in terms of the image segments and it has been proven to provide a reliable falling condition evaluation back in 2017 so yeah those are like two general steps that we have we, we will identify all the particle regions and then we will treat all the other regions as the uh, fall, uh, falling area and we will ca calculate the pds by uh, subtracting the uh, particle over image by 100 percent so then we do a regression analysis to show whether this is applicable and we can see we, we can see the PDS value at the uh, well known like F5 value has somehow a good relationship between each other. We have like this established like four formula here with R square equal to 0 0.72. Yeah. So next I will go into some like ongoing research efforts. So this one is for the FI automatic scanning project. So uh, as I mentioned pre 
privacy uh, to improve the performance of uh, deep learning model, we can do two ways. The first is to enrich the data set so that we have better guidance and more enriched knowledge to guide the model to do the uh, segmentation task. The second one is to improve the model architecture to ensure that the model has better capability to do the task. So what we do here is to improve the model architecture. Uh, we somehow replace the mask scan uh, head with this point ring, a new like module proposed by there. Uh, like we have like the same backbone. We have the course predictions for each bound boundary points, and we do the multi-layer uh, perception for each of those uh, boundary <coughs> points, and we do this like for several rounds, and we can have a really good results. So here is like the. Uh, the point sampling during training process. Uh, th this is also for like adapting the subdivision step. Uh, so for this step, uh, we sample 14 square uh, points. So for, for this regular grade, because like the density of the grade is 14 by 14, so we just sample all the points. But when we uh, increasing the, the density of the grid, we can say the we can focus more on the boundary without increasing the complexity of the model. Yeah, so which is really uh, ideal. And here are some like results that is published in their original paper in 2020. So this is a really promising approach to update the model architecture and improve the performance, especially the boundary estimation accuracy. Yeah, actually for the instant segmentation task, the boundary is the one that is really difficult within that object, it's not a big deal because all those pixels around the center of that object should be lost to, yeah. And yeah, and then we successfully apply this to our current model. And then we train it on a small customized <coughs> data set that we have. So those are some visualization results during the training process. So first we have this 28 by 28 sampling grid and we increase the the resolution, but we don't increase the number of points we sample. So the computing power is still the same, but the resolution can increase a lot. Yeah, and then we have we further increase the resolution, and we get a really accurate boundary pr prediction here. So those are several results we have here. So on the top, uh, as you guys can see there is like a sharp angle underneath the particle, right? In our previous model, you cannot recognize this. But with our improved one, we can actually find that sharp angle at the bottom here. And for the second one, we have this like fun rates. It's, uh, it's not that accurate, but with our improved one, we can have a really accurate estimation here. Okay, let me go. So the next, uh, the next direction to improve is to uh, to have like uh, more information from 3D dimension instead of only from 2D. So this is uh, another ongoing project in our uh, in our research group did by Hao uh, It's It's ICTR 27-214 project. Mm, so for this one, the overall pipeline is still the same: data set preparation, model selection, and results analysis. So for the data set preparation, instead of uh, collecting 2D images, we, we collect 3D point clouds. So those are a different format of input. And then for the model, we, we cannot use mask CN. So we need to find some like 3D segmentation model. So here, this, this is one of the model that we find, which is called point group. So as you guys can see, we have the inputs n by six, n by three coordinates, and n by three colors. We do a, a backbone network to extract the features from the input uh, 3D point cloud, and we do the uh, semantic branch and off offset branch to do the cl uh, class prediction and the coordinates pr prediction. And then we do the long maximum separation, and we have the, the final prediction for the uh, class and also the bounding box for each instance. So this is another uh, network that we have. Uh, so this one is called uh, GIECN. So we have the still the input 3D point cloud, and we go through one of the previous uh, network, which is called Point Network Plus, and we have like uh, two different outputs: point features and global features. 
both of them will be passed to uh, passed to the bounding box prediction network and mass prediction network to predict the math and as well as the bounding box so that we can have each bounding box for each uh, instance together with the class label. Yeah. That's the overall like idea of this 3D version of the IRIP app. I think that's us. Yeah, several conclusions here. The developed advanced deep learning based approach can accurately assess the target aggregate assembly like uh, for different applications in an automated manner. But uh, one thing to notice here is that the performance of, of the model relies heavily on the segmentation results. So we do need to clearly identify like, what is our target and prepare a high quality data set with enough diversity and good coverage. And the third one is that for the post-processing step, we should uh, design it like for different tasks, find the, the actual like uh, indices that we really need to want to uh, have in the end for that application. Yeah. That's pretty much, I think, and several minutes. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the presentation. This was, you think this was really nice work uh, to see. Um, you showed in the beginning some cut HMA uh, section, uh, Hotmix Asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, this was interesting to me because this is my area of, of uh, expertise. But um, when you start cutting specimens, actually something different happens, right? Because you are identifying now no longer the original shape and size of the, the aggregates. You are now actually identifying a cut shape and size. And there are some statistical uh, stereological methods to deal with that, but I'm curious, have you guys done any work on this so far or looked at um, what's the effect of cutting when, when a specimen is cut? No, not yet. <laughs> this is just, just what we have in mind that we can potentially put on pipeline to, to have this opportunity. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No. It's it's very interesting. It's just it's just when you do this in the future, be very careful because when you cut specimens, now you're no the original gradation. Remember, is based on whole aggregates. Yes. It's not based on this cut section. This gradation is a two D apparent gradation that will look totally different. Um. Anyway, it would be good to talk when you guys go to do this because I did a lot of work on how to transform a two D to a three D slice gradation and things like that. The second question also related to asphalt uh, mixtures mm -hmm. is that segmentation presents some challenges uh, for us because if you notice every every coarse aggregate in an asphalt mix is surrounded by some film and there's actually a film of uh, mastic or binder bound to that aggregate right it's coated mm -hmm. i mean when you mix hot mix asphalt every aggregate has a coating and when you segment Essentially, uh, the way you guys have been segmenting here, you're essentially assuming that the particles are exactly in contact. Well, actually, during our approach, we don't require the, uh, the particles to be in contact with each other. They can be separate. They can okay. have some voids in between. Yeah. So, so voids, but they're, if, if they're, I mean, if they're packed at all, there will be some point of contact between every particle, right? I mean, there cannot be just pure air between two particles, right? Uh, I don't think that will be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, as long as you guys can provide like an accurate like data set with correct labeling, the model can learn like what what is expected for the segmentation. Do yeah, that? like did you, did you show some heavily piled ballast material with only aggregates floating in the uh, matrix of points? Uh, sure, I think this one is. Uh, okay, this one is pretty much what. Yeah, so this is this is similar in a way, um, but so but this is actually everything that's not uh, aggregate here is I, I mean everything that's not segmented here is fine aggregate or air, right? I mean it's it's all I mean, there's only aggregate here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is not a stabilized palace, for example. Yes, but if it was, let's say, even if it was stabilized palace, then you would have some asphalt content right i mean you would have actually some other material oh, I see. and you cannot identify this with segmentation so did you guys do any work for example in stabilized ballasts or anything um, like that no uh, but uh, one quick answer to your previous one 
question is that during the segmentation, say we can actually detect different classes. Like we can we can detect the rock, we can de detect falling area, we can also detect what you, what you mentioned the asphalt components as well. Just just ensure that you prepare those labels carefully and correctly during the labeling process, and the model can handle it. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, I guess that's a challenge because in the asphalt, for example, there are so many yeah, fine, it. fine that's particles, it. right? I mean, I mean, for example, you cannot do this for clay soil, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, otherwise you'd be labeling small. particles for the rest of your life uh, to do one image, right? So, mm -hmm. so this is the tricky thing. It's, it's, I guess it's, it's limited in that sense because we have a gradation that goes all the way to very fine. So you're going to set a cutoff point and everything yes. else is quote unquote fine. mortar. Right, I mean, or, or mastic, whatever you want to call it, but you have to set a cutoff point, like you did here. I mean, many aggregates here are fines, right? Mm -hmm. So, did you set a cutoff point? We're not yes. going to segment anything smaller yes. than, and what was that? Uh, it's 38 inch. 38 inch, okay. So, okay. it's based on the ARIMA gradation specs for the balance here. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay. okay. Do you mind going to a picture of the stockpile request? Uh, at which um, yeah, this is fine. Um, maybe it was a basic question. First, really nice presentation and great work. Um, the question with this when you're segmenting the instances and inherently on the stockpile, one rock will be behind the other. Uh -huh. How do you output the, the correct shape and size that oh, you uh, output to the gradation if it's inherently behind the right? So, uh, during our process, our current approach will be more like if. That particle can only be seen, like only a small portion of that can be seen by us. We will only label that small portion, and uh, we will use that directly to the like size and shape analysis step. Uh, in in the future, we also plan to apply like a completion network. Like we know that this particle is incomplete, but right? there are like some portion of that is hidden underneath some particles. We will do a completion that that work to fulfill the, to predict the shape, and that that has not been completed yet. So currently, we, we just treat whatever we can see as the ground truth. Yeah, that's our approach. Mm -hmm. So then, after you identify the boundary, you check the completion of it, and then that gets forgotten on the forward step of your analysis. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank exactly. You. Thanks. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, we have just one more. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. You basically like summarized an entire deep learning class in 35 minutes. So like that was very impressive. Um, I had a similar question and I want to sort of go on on the same question of like, did you consider using maybe Synthetic data, so you don't have to do the labeling oh, yeah. yourself. Yeah, that's because really. It might take a very long time to do that. Yeah, actually, the manual labeling is really a time consuming step that requires a lot of labor work. So, in our 3D approach, because like we have several like point clouds, right? To actually label the instance in 3D space is really hard. We need to like find a correct view to cut like different points. Uh, so for that, what we, uh, we, we, all, we already have some approaches to generate the 3D point clouds together with the correct labels. But for the 2D, uh, as you guys can see, for the balanced condition, it's really hard to use some like game engine to simulate a really like a realistic thing. So, uh, so with, uh, if we can do that, we can actually uh, do the labeling quite uh, straightforward. Like we change all the particles and uh, all the particles color to black, or the other particles to white, and then we can have like a uh, like a uh, class uh, labels, right? But we haven't done that yet because uh, in order to simulate the ballast as a real like realistic image, that's a quite uh, hard task. It's not like the rewrap. We only have some like large size ones. Yeah, that's the the, the idea. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Right. Thank you.